Hi guys, welcome back to Jeff and Chi Do. Today we're going to do a slightly different video, an assessment of our first long distance EV experience in a Nissan Leaf. So in this video, you'll see Chris. Good morning. Who is my mentor and myself traveling down to Christchurch. So the premise of this video is Chris and I are both hydropower engineers by profession and we wanted to attend the hydropower conference that was going to be held in Christchurch this September. Instead of flying, we thought that we would travel there in an EV. However, there were none for hire in Taupo. So we approached Drive EV, which is our local EV vendor. And to our surprise, they have very generously provided us to use their loaned vehicle, which was a Nissan Leaf. A big thank you to you, Drive EV and your crew for this generosity. And you have been really helpful and very friendly in the whole process. So in the very first step, we had to do some planning and we needed to know where to charge our electric vehicle from Topo all the way down to Christchurch and back. Now there's a company called ChargeNet in New Zealand and they have been the ones providing the charge network all over New Zealand. There's a second app that we use called A Better Route Planner and it's a free app. This planner app lets us input our starting and ending locations, the car model, the state of charge, and then it plans your journey, including an estimate of where to charge, how much to charge, and how long to charge for. To be conservative, we planned to travel between 20% and 80% state of charge of the battery. And on top of that, we also added additional traveling time. So on the day when we picked up the EV, Steve and Jay at Drive EV gave us the lowdown on the leaf and they showed us how to charge the electric vehicle and how to read the display information and then he sent us on our way. Got drive, reverse and B mode and park. The car was a 2017 Nissan Leaf at 30 kilowatt hours. However, it's got a, a battery state of health of um, 79 percent. The first time we charged, that was a bit of a learning experience. The car must be fully turned off before it will start charging. The other thing we learned is that the plug on the charge station... Once you've removed it, and if it doesn't work, you'd actually have to reset it by putting it back to, the, um, to its dispenser. And then it's ready for charging again. Then take it out. So after this little learning curve in our first charge, we actually found that this fob that's provided makes charging really quick and it takes only a fraction of a second to scan it and everything is electronically logged. And we would usually be charging within 30 seconds of stopping at the charging station. The charge stations were also conveniently located all along our route. And we also noticed that when the battery is not hot, the charge times were often really short and there's hardly any inconvenience. The, the vehicle, the Leaf, is uh, quite a pleasure to drive. Yeah, very stable. Um, uh, even at high speeds, you just, you, you won't realize that we're traveling at 100. And, um, it's got good grunts for overtaking, so good acceleration. As you would expect of electric motors. Yes, that's true. No problem there. Now, we wouldn't deny that in our first legs, we had some range anxiety 
uh, just this is just because the battery charge would drop so quickly relative to a petrol car say but once we got used to it and especially as the a better route planners app proved to be very reliable we no longer had the same range anxiety driving at 100k appears to have not very much effect on your range you just sit there at 100k and it's fine now relating to battery usage we noticed that the battery usage was often less than that indicated on the route planner we think that this is largely due to our driving behavior being non-aggressive and light-footed on the accelerator and having the brake regeneration option turned on now as we traveled a quite a long distance topo to christchurch totals about 700 kilometers excluding the ferry trip we also noticed that with this long travel that the charge times can be a lot longer than indicated on the route planner we were able to correlate this to when the battery was hot and also when the car is being charged multiple times a day so this resulted in two things the charge rate or the charge efficiency dropped by about three folds when comparing to the battery at its hottest and when it's at its coolest and because charge net charges in both time and kilowatt hours the cost to charge then increases as the battery gets hotter on our way to Christchurch, we split our journey into two days. The charging cost for the trip down was $100 in comparison to our return trip, which was done in just one day, the charging cost was at $130. And in the second point, the total time taken to travel increased quite significantly against the estimated time. And it appears that the LEAF has this battery heating problem because it uses a passive air cooling battery system. We found that there's so many charging stations available throughout the country. There isn't any gap that was too long for the leaf to handle. In saying that, we noticed that most of the charge points are limited to a single charging station, although we have seen some with two or three, but these are quite rare. One of the charge stations, somebody was already charging. And the person who's got the charger has just come back. We might be in luck. And they were doing a big charge, and they kindly let us uh, I go first, I jump the queue. So one of your vulnerabilities with this is that um, is if you get to a charge station and they are all really occupied and your timetable goes out the window a little bit. And that actually happened in Wellington for us. So it happened to us twice? Yes, it happened to us twice. Most of the time the charge stations are free, but if they're not, you can look on the app and uh, in advance. It tells you the status. Yes, the current status. When we were catching the Inter-Islander, um, a better route planner indicated the Grace Street Charger and that mucked us around a bit actually, in fact. Because it's straight in the in the CBD of Wellington. Yeah. Um, and it's actually quite a way away yes. from the Inter-Islander boarding. As we were approaching, the Charger was being used. We would have been far better to have um, charged at a, a couple of the charge stations that were just close to the motorway coming into into the Wellington uh, City yeah like in Porira and other places yeah. so we actually crossed the strait on a very low battery 32 percent <laughs> and, and there's no charger in Picton so we but we got to Blenheim, Blenheim. no problem actually yep. as it turned out <laughs> but but it was because we drove with a reserve of 20 percent yes that's the plan so we actually had a reserve and we got to Blenheim with 16 i think yes 16 percent charge left yeah. so so um that was a good plan <laughs>
Our conclusions are the range anxiety that people talk about wasn't really an issue. However, long distance travel does need forward planning. And secondly, we learned that although the Nissan Leaf is probably not suitable as a long journey EV, but it is also not impossible to be taken on a road trip. So Chris, we've arrived, uh, we've parked. This was the only parking spot in the whole building. <laughs> and now we're headed to the conference center with half an hour to spare. And the car has done all it should do. And thirdly, the EV charging network is being improved year on year and with more charging stations being made available and charging time improved, I think the issue with waiting for someone else to charge is also going to improve. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that the information was useful to you. And even though all of the points that we've stated in this video may not be new, but it reinforces the idea that an EV is actually a viable car, even for long distance travel. And please check out Drive EV's website and get in touch with them if you are keen on getting an EV yourself. See ya.